Hey, good morning, everybody. Let me tell you what, like I get to do each and every week, thanks to you guys and gals. We're gonna be doing some fishing with our good friends from Eskimo. They've got absolutely incredible products. The shelters are incredible. The augers, like, you know, you're looking at that new E40, weighs less than 14 pounds. You know, that's incredible. I remember the days of hauling them big gas augers around, you know what, and when you start cutting and cutting holes, you know, just, it's a lot of stress. I mean, it's heavy, you know? So, I mean, there's so many different products that are out now to make our lives more comfortable for sure. And you know what? And help us catch more fish, you know? And that's all really what it's all about. It's about getting more people involved in the sport of ice fishing. Hey, so we're gonna go over a bunch of products. We also have our good friends from the Bite Me Box, Rick and Terry joining us today. And I'm sure there'll be some other surprises, but hey, enough of my chit chat. Let's get out of this farm, let's head north, and let's have some fun. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoy this week's show, so hang on to your heinies. It's gonna be a good day. I woke up in the middle of the night, opened my eyes and my own oh mind. Dreaming, dreaming you. Well, all my dreams are sweet when I lay me down. The little Debbies. The sun drop and the sandwiches. Everything else is very, very minor. Dream of you. Oh, little wallet. That's a good size wallet. Nice. Right. It's a crazy Andy. morning, huh? <laughs> Can't even get him set up. Every time I fish with you guys. Yeah, guys. well. Oh, there he goes, too. There you oh, go. Oh, he's dialing. He must have heard us. Yep. Nice. Oh, oh there you look go. at that. There we go. Yeah, nice good start. start off. Back home around, you know, the southern part of the state, we don't have a tremendous amount of ice. Some areas there still isn't any ice, but up here, the ice seems to range anywhere from what, four to seven inches. Yep. Good ice, not any snow on it yet. Hopefully that ice, there's another one up right there. Hopefully <laughs> that snow stays back and we can keep building. You know, that happened last year too. You know, you, we guide, of course, on the Winnebago system and probably one of the most inconsistent seasons we've ever had. We had to pull our gear in a bunch of times and, and let the ice, you know, stiffen back up. But if you love the ice fish, and I know you guys and gals do, you know what? And you don't have ice in your area, you can always go and find it, right? That's the part about it. Sometimes, you know, you have to adapt to what's going on. And uh, it seems like that's the whole deal here. Hey, got another one up over there? We better keep moving. Well, let's keep her going. <laughs> No, we were complaining about maybe the noise is scaring them, but then it popped up while all three of us were here, so. All with creepers on. All right. It did make a little run to start with. We had those tip-ups in the truck last night, so we're running them coals this morning. That really helped with thawing them out right away this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one, too. Yeah, that's a good one. We'll eat. That'll eat. There. Boy, those are perfect eating size fish, huh? Yeah. So this is something I like to do with a beaver tail on a spoon. I'll actually put it on kind of like, like wacky rigging in bass fishing in the middle and those little parts will just kind of drip down and kind of kind of wiggle and the perch just go nuts for it. I do it for walleyes too, but that's a great start to the morning. It's nonsense. Is it a walleye you think? It oh, feels, I'd like to see a walleye. It feels hard. Oh, look at that. Oh, it is a walleye, oh, you're right. Oh, nice job. So it's a shorter one, but Woo. it's a walleye. It's a good start. Even the little sure. ones are fun, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Nice perch. Oh, shallow water. Another nice, nice one on the beaver tail. Chartreuse. That if, I, if it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. That is my perch color. Every time I get around these bite me guys, these fish just go crazy. Old, old. <laughs> you think we gave them enough time? We'll let you decide when it's time to go. You tell us. All right, go ahead. Give it a little pop and pull. Got him. 
Yeah. Very easy, take easy. Remember what I said when they get Own the horse. Oh, that's nice a dean. Bird. Nice bird. Oh, yeah. nice job. Hold that Good up. Good job. Give me five. Great fish. Yeah, he feels good. Oh, we'll fight him out. It? Fight him out. Remember what I said Talk about fighting him? Oh, Let yeah. the camera know what you're fight feeling. Fight him out. Yep. Oh, I see him. Nice perch. Oh, that's a big one. Nice. Yeah, that'll work. He's a good eater. But he's fat. He's what a fat got? one. He's short, but he's oh, fat. Oh, we got one over here. Yeah, Oh, he's right over by your camera right now. Just come back. Oh, come on. Come on. Yeah. yeah! Look at that! <laughs> Hold that one up! Oh, <laughs> yaza, yaza, yaza! Awesome. Woo. That is awesome. Monster. You know, what a great way to start the day off. You know, there's plenty of ice, you guys. You just got to go and find it, right? Yep, definitely. That's beautiful. All over fish. up here. Yep. Nice and healthy, too. Lower down, big guy. Big guy. That's the problem with the big guys. They always want to just pull and pull and pull. Right? That hurts. Oh. That'll do. That's a that's a pretty small fish for a big guy wow. like you. Right? Hey. Takes all kinds. You, don't tell me you had beaver tail on that that bite me box. You never know. Got him, got him, got him. Why? Oh big perch! Huge perch! Yellow. What color? Green. The, the chartreuse? Yeah, the yellow. It's a yellow stream. Is that your biggest perch ever? Yes. Nice. It's so fat. We are popping some flags today, getting them on the jig rods. Those mags are bending. It's a great day to be alive. <laughs> what do you think, bud? Should we catch some more? Yeah. Let's do it. Big one! Even bigger! Oh, jeez. Look at him. Nice. He's like 11 inch. <laughs> it's a good fish. How did how did he hit? What were you doing? Just bouncing on the bottom like a spoon you do, and he came up and hit me like crazy. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Good work. Got him. Got him. There you go. Oh, there you go. Here, look at that. He's on fire. Oh, <laughs> oh, look at the size of that thing, Jumbo. dude. Look at that fatty. That's a big <laughs> fish of the day. Jumbo. So tell us, what's the secret to catching these? What's your secret bait? Stay, stay down and then just... It's what? a spoon that's a dis Okay, what that's the technique. What about the bait? What do you got on there for bait? Start to use um, beaver tail. Beaver, beaver tail. tail. What, oh, that's what the, the Sam Witz is beaver uh, tail is what I want to know. Hey, everybody. This week's tip of the week brought to you by our good friends up at Tigerton, Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. Hey, Andrew, you know something? You definitely got a great tip, and I'll tell you something. When it comes to ice fishing, or any time that water temperature is, is below 44, 46 degrees, scent is a big thing. And sometimes a visual too. So let's talk about what your tip is. Yeah, so a lot of times people on like pike leaders will, will throw a, a little bit of a spinner, a blade, something for flash. So what we're doing is we're running a little bit of beaver tail on the treble hook right above or right with the fat head. And it's, it's a, that fat head's moving the beaver tail. You guys have seen it in the water and how the action that it's got, if it has any life at all, it's moving and the perch are popping it. Let me tell you. That, which is a great tip. I'll tell you what, it, it works extremely well when you're running in stained water like flowages. It works really good because again, you got the scent and you got the vibration in the flash of that beaver tail. Hey, you guys, I'll tell you, again, this week's tip of the week brought to you by our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. Oh, oh, there you go. He's definitely a good fish. He's a good fighter, huh? He fooled you a little bit. Ooh, he's playing a little bit. Not a bad one on the bottom end of what we're getting today, but still biting. Fun to catch them. One of the things I'm running here is I've got low power mode going on because we're only in about oh six feet of water right now. And it seems like you can tell where the bite me's are going off is where people aren't and then everybody goes to that area. So I think the less power you're putting in the water is really making a big difference. We're not running any forward facing or anything today because we can just we can use the vexlars and find them in such shallow water 
and the bite me's are almost acting like a strike indicator. We're figuring out where the fish are that way. And then by running low power mode, I've been able to stick at one hole between me and Brantley and put quite a, quite a few on ice. I think just because I'm not putting as much thump into the water, that's a great reason to take a look at the Vexilar just because you have that option. And it's been working for me today. Uh, he's definitely there and I just went to slowly pull oh. my Ooh, there you go. I tell you what, I took a little bit of a break from uh, running after all these bite me boxes and uh, decided to do a little bit of jigging now. And again, just kind of hooking that beaver tail. Got uh, two pieces on there, using a treble hook and just letting that flutter down there and watching the Vexilar. And they're just coming in like crazy here. Again, what I'm doing is I'm pulling them off the bottom. Once I get them, I pound the bottom about three or four times just to kind of stir up that sediment there. And then I lift up about six inches and they start coming up. If they don't hit it, what I do is I just keep raising it real slow and then eventually, boop, they will slam it. And if they do go back down, I'll follow it back down, drop it right back down to the bottom, hit that bottom again, and just keep repeating that until I can get that fish to trigger. One after another. Again, the kind of the cool part about using beaver tail versus using live bait, again, you know, you don't have to keep rebaiting. You can catch, you know, 20 to 30 fish off of one, one or two strips of beaver tail. It makes it kind of nice. So watching the old Vexy, a lot of times, like when I'm fishing Lake Winnebago, I, I know on this rod he's only got six pound test on there, but when I'm fishing Winnebago in that 16 to 18 feet of water, most of the time I'm using 12 pound test. I want to be able to rip them fish out of that school fast and so they're not down there sitting there struggling because a lot of times that does warn the rest of the school. Obviously, it's not natural when they know something's up and that will push that school. So if you can stay above them fish always, get the aggressive ones to come out of the school and when you do hook them, just rip them right out of there and get them off the hook and get that bait back down there. The key is when you're dropping that bait down back down there, never let that bait when you're dropping it go back into the school. Always stay above them fish at all times. Make them come to you. Little one, like a oh, little brother. That was a decent one. Well, that's the one we had that beaver tail on there. Yep. So we were putting a little piece of that on there to give it a little extra action, and it's been triggering, triggering quite a few bites. So. Got him. Yes, there's that beaver tail. It stays right on there, nice. You guys are all jigging, bouncing around, and your boy's been just killing them over there. Yep. He's been getting them. Still seeing a lot of fish. It's definitely slowed down though. A little bit. It, it has slowed down, and that's one of the things as tip-up fishermen that we do is we're listening to the jig fishermen when they're out here. If they're saying those fish are coming in really slow like that, we're gonna go ahead and slide our split shot down, you know, a little bit closer to the minnow. We might pinch the tail off on there to really slow that minnow down, because those fish, they were aggressive this morning. They were, they were just smashing. Them. I mean, yep. the tip-ups were going up like crazy. Well. You know, common sense is going to tell you a fish, they, they can't eat like that all day. In the morning when they're really aggressive like that, we're going to run those bigger ones. We're getting the walleyes, the, the big perch will take them. Everything is going to take them when they're really aggressive and eating. But as that day goes on and they're not wanting to eat, we're going to get down to a really small minnow, something they just can't resist, you know, and it, it really, it pays dividends. We find a way to catch them all day. Good old beaver tail. That's how you get her done with the picky ones. Oh, a pretty one too. Larry! Oh, three for three, Rick, huh? Oh, he's taking line. Oh, it's a good fish. You go back. Come on. Oh, boy. Sow belly! Oh, oh look at there! Look at there. That's what we're talking about. The old bite me box. Wow, do they ever work good. First fish of the day. I just come out here, just got out here, and just trying to see what's going on out here, learning about bite me boxes from Terry, and and uh, wow, and then you catch one like that. That's a beautiful fish. Holy smokes. It's, it's almost like the days when you had a Harley and you were waving to the guy on a bike. You see another warrior on the water, you just get a good feel. 
first class all the way from the people that ride them to the people that make them. They do such a nice job with communication. They'll pick up the phone anytime. It's, it's really almost a friendship. You could be in any state, and when somebody with a warrior drives by you, you get that honk, that beep. You're truly part of a family, and there's nothing like it. Hey, everybody. I'm Tony Aloya, brand manager with Eskimo Ice Fishing Gear. This is Trevor Kinderman. He's our lead engineer that designs all the shelters for the Eskimo brand. But Trevor, okay, for the people who don't know, what is the escape shelter all about? What's the biggest thing about it? So the big thing with the escape shelter are the side doors, Tony. Uh, this is a, a patent pending design uh, that we came up with, and it allows the, the anglers to access their out the side of the shelter um, instead of walking over top of all your gear. We've had these escape shelters out for a while now. What I love the most about them is you're not tripping over your flasher, you're not tripping over your gear getting in and out, you're not putting a foot in the hole. If you get a tip up or a bite me box, you can easily open up the door, jump out, you can go and grab it. It's awesome, it's a total game changer. I know that's cliche, but it really does change things. Yeah, it does. I mean, and it's great for that guy that, you know, fishes alone most of the time, but maybe he's got the kids at home or uh, brings a buddy occasionally and it's sized to accommodate two people yet. Like we talked about, it's designed to be used for live imaging, forward facing sonar. And one of the things that's awesome about it is this bench seat. This bench seat is really comfortable. It provides room for two people if needed or just a lot of space for one person. But what I really like about it is if you flip it up, you've got a lot of storage underneath the seat. So this, this shack really fishes big, but it packs down small. And it's really compact and allows you to bring all your gear with plenty of place to store it. So we talked about the under seat storage. There's also accessories that we make like seat back storage here with zipper pockets or some gear net storage up here to be able to put jackets or gloves or hats or just tackle boxes, uh, as, long as, as well as a lot of built-in pockets in the back and on both sides you've got storage just so that when you're out here you can be comfortable, you can bring all your stuff and you're not feeling cramped at all. If you're interested in learning more about these products, the Escape series of shelters, or particularly Escape 2000, or any of our products, make sure you check out our website at GetEskimo.com. What do you think? Do you think he's convinced or do you think we need to let him swish it around in his mouth a little? It's your call, buddy. You can never go wrong by letting him a little longer because he's just going to swallow it more. He yep. isn't going to spit it out. That's a walleye. Yeah, oh too. yeah, that's definitely a walleye. Especially when you're fishing with sucker minnows, you know, and you give him a time to swallow it. That's what you like to see, that nice slow roll. That usually tells you it's, a, it's typically a walleye. Sandwich, does he? Who's grabbing them just so we know? You are gonna, you're gonna? Okay. A little under. Very short. Right. Gonna be, that 14 short. Yeah. yeah. Chunky. Yeah. Good one? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I see him. Gold? Good. Yep, yep. good one. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, give him some line, give him some line. Oh, back a reel, back a reel, back a reel. Yeah, he'll get him up. He's got him. Yeah, he'll get him up. There, no, a little bit more. He'll get him. A little more. Got him. Perfect. Nice. nice. Woo! Nice. Cool. Oh, nice. That's a nice color. First one of the year. First one of the year? <laughs> First one of the year. Yeah. Nice. You think you want another one? I think I want another one. Okay. Hey everybody, what an amazing day and a half we had up here. Wow, we had some great walleye fishing, incredible perch fishing. And I'll tell you what, everybody really did an awesome job from the bite me boxes to the jigging with the beaver tail. It was a fantastic day and a half. Every time those guys come up, we just have a blast. Every time I get you guys over here, I think we have quite a fun time. Today was everything you could have wanted it in just a great day outside and we've got ice finally. I've got a We're fish fishing. Market. Yeah. Market and that's the great market. part. They do have ice and there is quite a bit of ice around. You guys, you just got to hunt it down. Hey, you want to thank all of our good friends from Eskimo and Ion today for coming out and joining us in fishing. Boy, we had a great time with them too. Yeah. Oh man. Getting everybody out on the ice, I always like to do that. Get a big, especially when you get the bite me boxes going, because then you get to run him out and I won't have to 
make him work too hard before he has to go to bed, I bet. Yeah, oh, I tell you what, he's gonna sleep like a rock, I'll tell you that. Hey, Andrew, let's tell everybody a back road guide service, how they can get a hold of you. Yeah, you can look me up on Facebook, Backroads Guide Service, backroadsguideservice.com, or give me a call at 715-577-5875, and you'll come out on the ice, and we'll have another great day there, too. Hey, and I'll tell you what, I want to thank all your guys for helping us out, too. Like always, yes. great job on that. Hey, we want to thank all of our military men and women for the great service that they have given us and continue to give us, because I say this every week, we know why we have such a great country to live in. It's because of them men and women and putting their lives on the line. Hey, we also want to thank all of our firefighters and paramedics and no doubt all of our law enforcement agents. And we want to thank you guys and gals for working hard and for enjoying our show. And the great part is it is a great day to be alive and we're going to see you guys and gals again next week. And thanks for joining us. Let's see how far down in there it is. It's down, okay. Right Definitely. behind his cheeks. I think they like it when he's got yeah. right behind their cheeks. Hey, hey, that way, boy, or I'm going to beat you like a bowling ball right down the old gutter right there.